Okay, so this is the DW 1820A, which I got from AliExpress for $20. The DW 1560 now is getting up to $40 to $45, which I don't want to spend the money for. And I'm going to put into this HP for Mac OS Catalina to see if it works. So this one is the original. So we push it in with the angle and move the uh, antenna out of the way so we can put it down and put back the screw. Okay, so make sure to put back the antenna correctly. And this one is CN0VW3T3. And this one has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi is working. So let's check the speed on the windows. So let's run the speed test. So I think it's better than the Mac. Well, we can't tell. The Mac was uh, connected to the Dog and Monkey. This one is Dog Monkey 13. This one is uh, 5G. So my plan is 100 make a bit per second. So the Wi-Fi works perfectly on this one with open core. And DW1820A is a hard one to do. And Clover wouldn't boot at all. I mean, it would boot, but it would never get the, um, the Wi-Fi. So the uh, DW1820A I bought now is $20. Why the DW1560? which will work right out of the box will cost 45 bucks or more so if you don't want any headache and if you don't want to use the open core then get the 1828 it's cheap it's fast the handoff support is perfect airdrop that's me right there Catalina 15.5, what do you need to get this one running with open core? So this is open core. And inside of open core, you will have the config file. So let's open the config file. And what else do you need? You need Kex. So the Kex you need for this one is airport fix up kex bluetooth injector firmware data and batch ram 3 so which version is this there's many versions of this so i'm using the uh, 2.0.7 bluetooth injector 2.53 data 2.53 2.53 have to go to the kernel and add files in there all right you got to turn them on it's not like clover you just dump everything into the kex folder and hoping that it will inject the reason that Clover doesn't work on this one is because it couldn't inject correctly, I believe. All right, so airport fix up Kex. You have to set it up correctly and enable yes. Now, whatever you do with open core, the sequence have to be perfectly. If not, it's not gonna work. So, airport go first, injector go second, firmware data third, and the fourth one is the uh, patch RAM 3. So you need these four guys in here. Now, then you will get Bluetooth. Oh wait, on the device, device property, you need to add PCI 
fourteen E four and four three three one. So the four three three one, why is it four three three one? The four three three one is the ID. So if you open this up inside here they have the plug-in. And you have the 4360 KEX and also the NIC. Okay. So open package, content, and then when you open this up, you will see inside here I own a match. You have the 4331 and 4353. Okay. You put that. You put either 4331, but I use 4331 and it works. You can use 4353 if you want, or 43A0, whatever. Now, one thing is this PCI ASPM default is zero. That means you turn it off. And the NVRAM, the boot, when you boot, you don't need the fix. Okay, so with this open core, it's really good. If you don't need that BRCMFX drive dash dot driver equal to one or two or whatever, so this one alone it will work already. But it's very touchy about the ACPI. So. If you use the ACPI and the patch for the battery, like this one, it won't boot. If you use read write everything DSDT and SSDT. If you use the original extracted by Clover and patch it then it will it will work so it's very touchy with that or you use the original DSDT which mean that you don't turn it on if you turn this enable off then it will work too perfectly but you don't have the patch of the battery therefore you cannot tell if the battery is on or off or you know how much life you have left like 87 percent or whatever all right what's the difference between the origin that extracted by clover and the one i got from Read write everything. So here it is. The read write everything has 10 SSDT. While the origin from Clover only have 8 SSDT. So this is the difference. So finally I use, I try the original and I patch with the battery and you don't need to patch a lot all I need to do is to patch the battery and the wake version 2 and the 6D the power USB 3.0 Skylock for it not to instant wake okay so it's just 3 I have to put everything on here so PNLF is for the dimmer, okay? And I put all the eight SSDT. Well, make sure they they compile. So you have to fix it to make it compile, right? So these are compiled already. That means it's good. So you put all the SSDT in here alright 
and you use the PR gen. So this one is generated by PR gen. So this one, what it does is it give you the power management. Look at this. You see that? So it's a poke. So you need to use this instead of plug in type. Because when you plug put in a plug in type, it won't boot for some reason. I have one other tutorial on the PR Gen. If you download, go to the library, SSD PR generation. Okay. All you do is just run that and then it will come up with a SSDT for you. It will automatically look at your system and set up everything. Let's do that. See, you come up right here. You open it up. 3400 and what is the minimum? The PCI where your DW 1820 reside. So what you do is you use the hacking tool and you go to the PCI and right here you will see Broadcom. Copy the, copy the device path. So you're going to open one of these text file or whatever. There it is. So that one is the for where the DW 1820. So the device property here, when you add this whole thing right here, the only thing you add more is the PCI ASPM default. So you just add it in here after you get this one done after you copy this and you get it done so if you can't even do this then I don't think you can do that